Hello friends, uh, last class I discussed about the what are the criteria are required to fulfill the designing of the organic photo detector. So, today's class is the continuation of the previous class. So, uh, I have uh, told some uh, co common properties like optical properties and electrical properties of the organic semiconductors. What are the criteria are required? Huh? What can do the organic material, similar material can be used for designing organic photo detector which it should have some kind of the optical and electrical properties right now i have to consider the uh, organic semiconductor two different kind of the organic semiconductors we have to consider one is a pta semiconductor another is the anton semiconductor right so how we will choose such kind of the semiconductors so what can do the pta semiconductor is suitable for the anton semiconductor so that's the name structural consideration of the organic photo detector right so first we will draw the structure, mainly the energy level diagram of the organic photo detector. Three main criteria are required. First one. So I used to draw like this way. One level for P type is uh, above then the this uh, level of the anti semiconductor. Why it is required? Okay, this is LUMO, above one is the LUMO and below one is the uh, HUMO. So, and this is the ITO, ITO normally you, you, you can use, this I discussed on the last class, here, aluminium or silver, right? So, mainly, so normally the acetone, that the acetone is used to produce inside the P-type semiconductor, right? Inside the P-type semiconductor. Okay, this the process I have already told, right? The, this acetone, this has to diffuse at the interface of the uh, interface of the uh, and P and anti semiconductor, right? But at the interface, when it the, it will reach to the interface, it has to dissociate, right? So, but for dissociation, some criteria are required. Suppose this uh, why it, uh, dissociation is required for acetone. So normally the Frankel acetone, uh, the name of the acetone is the Frankel acetone. Frankel acetone. So this electron and hole, these are bounded with each other, right? We have to break, we have to dissociate these electron and holes to get free electrons and holes inside the device, right? But this binding energy is 0.125 electron volt for case of the organic semiconductor right for case of the organic semiconductor so for uh, we need to apply more than 0.5 electron volt uh, to break the acceptor right so if we apply the external electric field so we will need more amount of the voltage higher amount of the voltage external power supply or voltage is required that is not feasible right so if we use more um, higher amount of the voltage so it is not energy efficient right so for the internal we have to create the internal electric field which value is greater than this value right to generate this electric field uh, i normally use we can use the both two different kind of the semiconductors that is we, we, should, we will get energetic different energetic barrier at the interface this energetic barrier helps to dissociate the excitons okay but what will be the value of that energetic barrier Right. There, there are the lots of Peter semiconductors and anti semiconductors are available. But what kind of the Peter semiconductor should be suitable for the and one particular anti semiconductor, right? So there will be one energetic gap. This energetic gap, what will be the value of that energetic gap? Right. That means this energetic gap. Suppose here you can see delta lumo. This is delta. Hmm. So if we want to break the electron at interface, right? So this delta lumo that should be greater than 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 electron volt. Okay. So we have to uh, 
choose endotype semiconductor for in such a way for a p-type semiconductor so that we can get the delta lumo okay we can get the delta lumo so this delta lumo that the below of the delta lumo that should be greater than 0.1 to 0.5 electron volt for case of the electron dissociation suppose if the excitin is produced in the endotype semiconductor again it will decrease into the interface right right uh, decrease into the interface and at the interface it has to break so for case of the for this case this energetic gap is important because a hole has to reach there okay hole has to reach there electron will be remain same in this lumo level but hole has to reach there right so for breaking the hole delta homo that should be greater than this value okay so delta lumo and delta homo uh, um, these both are important but maximum electron acceptor used to produce inside the p-type semiconductor so this is mainly important delta lumo i have to check the delta lumo value which should be greater than 0.1 to 0.5 electron volt 0.1 is a minimum value 0.5 is the maximum value right this is the first condition so not only we have to consider that this condition other conditions we have to match properly okay. second condition second condition is that okay in case of the Peter Singleton, this I call this is the normally band gap between the Fumo um, uh, and the Lumo level of the Peter Singleton. So, in all kinds of the Peter Semiconductor, there is a uh, extra energy level. This should be lying between below the Lumo level. Okay. So, this normally used to call as E optical. Okay. There is a one extra energy level right okay so normally here i told that the electro excitum binding energy right as you manage it that is between 0.2 to 0.5 electron volt okay so now how can you measure this excitum binding energy for a particular semiconductor what will be the excitum binding energy for a particular semiconductor so this binding energy that is uh, suppose e Suppose this is E lumo. That energy, uh, the binding energy, that is the energetic gap between E lumo and E optical. Okay. So from here we get the acceptor binding energy. And this should be, this acceptor energy, this should be less than homo donor minus lumo of acceptor okay so this energy this binding energy how can you get the binding energy this gap gives the binding energy okay the difference between this energy level and this energy level this should be greater than this energy okay this should be actually uh, sorry, sorry this should be less than uh, this energetic gap. What is this energetic gap? Okay. Homo of the donor minus lumo of the acceptor. Okay. Lumo of the acceptor. Right. So this should be less than this one. Right. This is the second condition. Now, third condition. Right. So all the conditions we have to check. Uh, why I have told this one? So, we can, for considering this condition, delta lumo, for considering this condition, I can uh, choose a such an energetic semiconductor, this gap is very much high. But, uh, along with this thing, we have to check this gap also. This should not be less, less than 0.5. Okay, this should not be very much less. Right? This is the second condition. Because this gap, that should be less than to this uh, room of the donor and the room of the acceptor. This is the second condition. Now, third condition. Third one. Third one is that, here I told this gap, right? This gap. But, uh, sometimes, if you reduce, another in another case also, if you reduce this thing too much, 
Then suppose okay, who move donor? Okay, who move donor that should minus no more acceptor. Right? This this gap should be at least 0.5, not less than, I can consider 0.4 also, not less than 0.4, it should not be, not less than 0.4 electron volt, this energy detail should not be not less than 0.4 electron volt, or to reduce the, you know, to reduce the germinate recombination, what is the germinate recombination, if it is, uh, suppose if it is there only, if the Lomo is, is, suppose it is there only, and this gap is 0.3. So, uh, if somehow in the device, electrons are already there, electrons seems to present in the Lomo level. So, this electron will be again recombined with the hole. Okay, recombined with the hole. The hole is produced in the, due to the exciton, this hole will be recombined with this electron. That is called the germinate recombination. Okay, to overcome germinate recombination, this gap should not be less than 0.4 electro volt. Okay, these are the criteria we have to follow. Right? So, these three criteria mainly we have to follow for designing P-tape semiconductor uh, organic photodetector by choosing the P-tape semiconductor and the anti semiconductor. Okay, next is the I show, I already spoke about the uh, two different kind of the semiconductors, right, mm, based on the uh, structural concept. P and N, these are based on the electron mobility, right. So, then one is a small molecule, another is the polymer molecule, right. So, what can do the uh, semiconductor have to choose for giving, for getting the high performance organic operator, right, small molecule. And polymer. So, for case of the polymer, huh, main advantage is that it gives the high performance, high performance, high EQ, external quantum efficiency. This is the more important if you want to design the solar cell, right? But in this case, we uh, get, uh, we'll get a uh, uh, high speed. High speed also will get in both cases. Okay, high speed also will get in these cases. But for case of the high speed, this molecule is considered. Well, normally I prefer the small molecule. Why? So, uh, if you think about the simple fabrication, polymer is suitable, right? But there are the other uh, parameters you have to consider before choosing the polymer. What are the parameters? So, if we choose the small molecule, so for choosing small molecule, uh, we, we can no extra solvent is required, right? No extra solvent is required for that. Um, extra solvent, so it will be less materials are required. If extra solvents are not required, that means less materials are required. Uh, um, apart from this, if we use uh, um, extra solvent, okay, suppose if we use polymer, but it has to dissolve into the solvent, right? And now for deposition purpose, if we use the polymer, right? So during deposition, if the polymer is not dissolved with the solvent properly, so during deposition or during coating, we will not get the uniformity or uniform layer. But in case of the small molecule, uniformity is there. So uniform, uniform thin cream is mainly important if you design the such kind of the device. Okay, so no, we will not get uniformity, right? Uniformity will not get. Okay, we will not get. Here we will get uniformity. So, due to this, lots of trash states are available. Lots of trash states are available. There is extra, um, um, extra byproducts are available in the thin plane. Right, so due to this, so electron cannot move smoothly through the device. So, in turn, which in turn will get the less mobility inside the device and less response, right? So, here we will get the less response. If extra trap states, multiple states, uh, states are there inside the device, so electron cannot move properly through the system, so we will get the less response. So, here no trap states. 
no crab sticks, right? And we can use multi-layer. Due to the uniformity and uh, the upper layer, it will not hamper the below layer in case of the small molecule, okay? So, but in case of polymer, the upper layer can degrade the uh, below layer, right? So, due to that, we can design the multi-layer OPT. And if we design the multi-layer OPT, we can tune the different kind of the lights. We can tune the different kind of the lights, okay? So, multi-layer is possible and tunability is possible. Next is the stability. Okay, this thing is not possible in case of the small molecule. Why stability, less stability? Because here we need the extra solvent. Okay, and we have to do, uh, we have to design such kind of the structure under the nitrogen atmosphere. But uh, uh, nitrogen, we have to design the polymer layer because extra solvent, this solvent may react with the the polymer may react with the environment, right? So the stability there is a stability problem. But in case of the small molecule, less stability, right? So though the polymer molecule, polymer based uh, organism, organic polymer gives high performance, but due to the this uh, lack of uh, problem, we cannot use this polymer material. I used to prefer the small molecules, right? Though here it is giving the less performance, okay? Next, we come to the, these are the active layers as I told, huh? small molecule and polymers, these are the active layers. But nowadays, we have to use the extra layer. Okay, nowadays, we have to use the extra layer. Suppose, IPO, cohesion, organism, 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 uh, aluminum, right? Suppose if you want to design the thin film, suppose this is the 10 nanometer, this is the 10 nanometer. For getting some other properties, if we uh, design 10 nanometer thickness of OS1 and 10 nanometer thickness of OS2, then uh, due to the porosity, these are the organism where the amos, due to, amorphous, due to the porosity, during deposition of the aluminum, it can penetrate into the I2 layer. And instead of getting the diode behavior, we will get the linear behavior. Okay. This will not get, we will get the short circuit behavior, we will get linear behavior, right? So, for that, in between OS1 and I2, we have to use a one layer that is normally many paper seen P dot PSS, okay? This P and also some roughness is there in case of the ITO. So, if we deposit the P dot PSS above the ITO, though we will we'll get the smooth roughness, okay? We will get the smooth roughness. And due to this layer, this, uh, suppose the aluminum may penetrate into this layer. But, due to the P dot PSS layer, it cannot penetrate into the I2 layer. Instead of getting the linear behavior, that time we will get the diode behavior. That is, we will get the high rectification behavior. If we use the P dot PSS. Apart from this, so, there will be the work function. Okay. So, this will be the transport. So again, so for getting the smooth roughness of ITO, we can use the P dot PSS and due to the P dot PSS, the aluminum will not penetrate into the ITO layer. Other than that, there will be the good energy level alignment between the ITO and the organism one due to the P dot PSS layer. Apart from the P dot PSS, we can use nowadays reduced graphene oxide or graphene layer, right? Reduced graphene oxide and graphene layer. Right, and nowadays, even to the nanotubes are also used. Now, again, so this is normally used as a electron blocking layer, hole blocking layer. Okay, another you can uh, this is normally used as one kind of the blocking layer, and again, we can use as a another blocking layer. Okay, this is the blocking layer. Due to blocking layer, electron cannot inject into the device because injection, we won't require the injection of the electron and holes, right? So, due to that, the electron cannot inject from this to this, right? And due to this, sometimes hole will not inject. Instead of period PSS, we can use the extra layer, 
Okay, you can use the extra layer and so that hole cannot inject into the device. Okay, you can inject into the so period with the lots of blocking layers are available. You can do the organic semiconductor, BCP, graphene oxide, zinc oxide. So, which you can do the composition of the blocking layer you can use. Right. So this is about the structure of the organic photo detector. So next class I will discuss about the different kind of the organic photo detector can be used for different different applications. So I will discuss about the application specific organic photo detector. Thank you.